Good morning, River of Life Community Fellowship. It is time for our Saturday edition of Sunday School, where we have a short daily devotion since we can't meet in person for Sunday School. Now, this week we've been talking a lot about sin and temptation and how we're supposed to deal with it as followers of Christ and how we're supposed to help other followers of Christ deal with it in their walks. Yesterday, I talked about how we as believers are supposed to help others who come to us with issues, saying, you know, dealing with sin and temptation, how we're supposed to help them. But what about if we see somebody, a follower of Christ, in sin, and either they don't recognize it as sin or they don't care? That how are we as followers of Christ supposed to deal with that? And I, I think I think the answer comes very clearly in, in uh, Galatians 6.1. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourselves, lest you, yet, lest you too be tempted. And see, I think that's an important thing. When we know somebody is involved in sin... We can't just allow that to stand. And that, that's what Paul's getting here. Because we have to keep watch on that. Because if we allow that to come into our fellowship, we allow that, like we're in a lot of ways, we're allowing it to come into our lives. And so we can't just allow people to keep going on sinning. Sin is a very destructive thing. And if we allow people who are actively engaging in sin and not dealing with it, then if we allow them into our fellowships, it hinders our fellowship. And we don't want that to happen. We want them to grow closer to God as we are growing closer to God. So we have to deal with it. That That is a very important thing. We have to deal with the sin of the Christians that are around us. We have to deal with it. But how do we deal with it? And this is like, it's very important to do this the right way. So how do we deal with it? The first thing that we do, Matthew 7 5 says this. <clears throat> we'll start actually in Matthew 7, 3. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when there is a log in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly, clearly to take the speck out of your eye. The first thing that we have to do, if we see somebody a fellow Christian involved in sin, the first thing we have to do in dealing with that is make sure that we're not involved in sin. To deal with the sins that are in our lives, which there are many. No matter who we are, as followers of Christ, we have sin in us and we have to deal with that. We have to take that to God. We have to confess it to him. We have to allow him to forgive us and we have to repent. We have to go the other way and not do that thing anymore. And so the first thing that we do when we see our brothers or sisters involved in sin is we make sure that we are not. We deal with what's going on in us first. And then once we've taken the log out of our own eye, then we have to ask ourselves a question. Is the thing that I see going on in this other person's life, is it really a sin or is it just a difference of opinion? And I think this is an important thing. And Paul actually called this out when in his letter to the Romans. He, he wrote this in Romans 14, verses 1 through 4. As for the one who is weak in the faith, welcome him. But do not quarrel over opinions. One person believes he may eat anything, while the weak person eats only vegetables. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains. Let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats. For God has welcomed, this, welcomed him. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls, and he will be and he will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make him stand. And so what this is telling us is that, you know, sometimes we say, no, this is the way things should be. This, this is the way things should be, when really that's just kind of our opinion of how things should be. Like there's a lot of things that we do in Western Christianity that if we were to go over to like Africa, like, or if someone from Africa was come to our church, we'd be like, what is going on here? It would just be so foreign to them because there's a lot of the, a lot of how we worship Jesus is based more on cultural things that we do rather than the things of God. And that's the way it should be because God calls us 
well, no matter the culture, the nation, tribe, tongue, whatever, God calls all of them into fellowship with him. And we each worship God through our culture, through the way we were raised, through the things that we believe are important. That's how we worship God. And so a believer in Africa should look different than a believer in America. That's, that's just the way it should be because our cultures are different. And so the way that we worship Jesus should be different, but there are still things that are sins. And so we have to identify which are the things that are actually sin and which one of them is just a cultural difference or a difference of opinion. Like, you know, do we have church on Saturday or Sunday? Do we eat bacon or not eat bacon? I vote bacon, just so you know. Um, but, you know, are those things sins or are they just opinions? And so that's the next thing you have to figure out. You have to ask your question, is what's going on a sin or is it just a difference of opinion? And truthfully, if you're not in the Word of God, if you're not spending time in the Word of God, if you're not seeking out what God tells us, that's going to be a hard question to answer. So you need to be in the Word of God. You need to be studying this book so that you know, like, this is a sin, this is a cultural issue. That That's that's how we know, is by we gauge it by Scripture. And so then we ask, okay, is it a sin or is it not a sin? Now, if we identify it as a sin, and there's some that are pretty easy, like, you know, if someone's committing adultery, that's a sin. If someone is stealing, that's a sin. If someone is flat out lying about things, that's a sin. And some of these things are pretty easy to tell. So if we identify it, okay, yeah, this is a sin, then what's the next thing to do? How do we correct a brother gently when they're involved in sin? What are the things that we need to do? Now, I think Matthew 18 gives us a very good um, framework for dealing with issues like this. Now, this is this kind of talks from the, the standpoint of if if someone sins against you. But I think it just it still works for, you know, if someone is caught in sin, you know, this is this is what we do. <clears throat> Matthew 18, verse 15, it says, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. So that's the first thing we do. We go to this, like, look, I, I think this thing that you're involved in, I think this is sin. I think this is wrong. I don't think you should be doing this. All right? So that, that's the first thing. We tell, and then I, I love how verse 15 finishes. If he listens to you, you have gained your you have gained your brother. Then verse 16. But if he doesn't listen to you, take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. So then, you know, like you, you go to someone and say, you know what, I think this might be sin, and then they say, no, no, it's not, or I don't care, whatever. You know, then then you you take others with you, and you say, no, look, like from trusted brothers to you we're saying look this is this is um an issue and you need to you need to deal with this you need to deal like this has to be dealt with and then if if the person's still like you know what i don't believe it's a sin whatever then 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 you get involved the church that's the next part of matthew 18 verse 17 if he refuses to listen to them tell it to the church and so then the pastor can come out, no, really, this is what the scripture says. And sometimes it's good just to start with going to the pastor and say, Pastor, I think this is going on. And, you know, I think it's a sin. And then you can study the word and say, no, this is this is what the word of God says. This is a sin. Or, no, this isn't a sin. It's just an opinion issue. And so um, then you get the church involved and then the church kind of takes it from there. But that that's kind of like how we go through this process of correcting a brother gently. But I, I think a very important part of that is actually found in Galatians 6 2. And I mentioned this in the sermon on Sunday that, you know, Galatians 6 1 says, Brothers, if anyone is caught in sin in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourselves, lest you too be tempted. And then verse 2, bear one another bur bear one another, bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. And so as you're trying to correct a brother gently, the, like that, it, there's a, an important part of that is bearing their burdens with them as well. Like, you know, sin is a hard thing. And dealing with addiction, dealing with recurrent sin in your life is a hard thing to do. Like sometimes God just gives us freedom from those things right away. Other times he says to us, my grace is sufficient for you. And so, you know, so like we just need to bear that with them and say, you know, we come around them with love and respect and say, you know what, this sucks. Let's confess it to God and then let's set ourselves up to not do this anymore. And if they do it again, okay, let's confess this to God and let's set ourselves up 
to not do this again. Where did we fail this last time? And let's try to work on that. And so we just do it, just step by step, living in grace and showing them grace because that is what God did for us. So that, that's how we correct a brother gently. And first of all, we deal with our own sin. And then we make sure that what's going on in our brother's life is a sin. And then we take it to them and bring others with us if we need to. But it all comes from a spirit of compassion and grace because that's what God shows us. And so we show that same love and compassion to others and we try to help them along in their faith. Now, if someone is um, in sin and they are just not repentant of it, they're like, no, I, I don't care. You know, I'm just going to keep doing this because I want to. That is a bigger issue. And that is something that the leadership of the church then needs to get involved in. And that, that then kind of steps out of your hands and it, it's into the hands of the, the authority figures that God has placed over that. And so um, it, you, that's something that you can hand off. But before that point, like love and compassion, grace, because God has shown you grace. But that's how we correct a brother gently. And I think that's such an important thing because like we all need that. Like we all have sin in our lives and sometimes, a lot of times, like we have blind spots. We don't even see these things going on, but they're there. And we need our brothers and sisters in Christ to come alongside of us and say, hey, this thing's going on and it needs dealt with. And so then, then we're able to deal with it. So we do that out of love. We do that out of respect. And we do that out of gentleness so that we can grow together in Christ, that their faith can be built like my faith is being built. And my faith can be built like their faith is being built. And we can be built up together in Christ. And so that's my encouragement to you to, you know, constantly seek God on these things. And if you see something going on, like you can deal with it, but go through the steps first. Make sure you're right with God. Make sure it's a sin and go through it with a, um, an attitude of grace and compassion. So with that, that's all I have for this week. I'm excited for tomorrow and I'm excited to share with what God had to share with you what God has, what God has shown me in his word. So thanks and God bless.